Okay, hello, and we are back on another live stream, which I have not done in a while. Um, so I'm pretty excited to be back. I have a great topic I want to go through today. So a couple of housekeeping things I do want to talk about before I get into the main topic, which is actually going into more depth on what is an awakening. Because you see that word thrown around a lot, and I want to get a little more in depth on what does that exactly mean? <laughs> Someone says they've gone through an awakening. What is that actually saying? And have you gone through one? Some people say they've gone through one and other people, you know, don't even know if they have yet. <laughs> I can even look back on my journey and, and think, well, when would I say was an awakening? You know, when did I go from my awakening into my ascension? You know, where was those lines at? Because there is a part of our human brain, human ego, that would still kind of want to separate it out. for kind of separate because it wants to understand it. and then the aspect of us that wants to separate it out so we can explain it you know so we can assist someone else going through it so when they get to that point they'll be able to say oh now i now i know what's going on because there is this timing aspect to it that is kind of interesting to talk about so i will open up the chat in about 20 or 30 minutes i do want to give a quick quick um, minute to the equinox which is coming up on the 21st it is the gates have already opened for the equinox so a lot of people are already starting to feel it for me I usually get a glimpse of what's going on what I'll be focusing on in the next linear year I usually start to feel that coming in <laughs> um, in the equinox I might not actually hit the ground running with it until October November and sometimes I don't know the entire slate of what I'm doing till you know January February March or when you're also on the other side of it too with ascension you usually don't when you're embodying in stuff or working on different higher aspects of yourself you usually don't know what you're doing until you get to the other side of it because your consciousness reaches the understanding of what's been going on because everything you cleared while doing that experience was blocking that information in the sun so that's why you couldn't know <laughs> Our human wants to know right now, why do I got to do this right now? Why do I have to do this? Like the journey I went on last year and this, this past year, I didn't want to do it. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to go do that. Why do I got to go do that? But it made sense as I went through that, that I had to go back and, and live with people in the house again because after being living by myself for so many years, I had to be able to live in unity consciousness with other people. Even if they weren't in that consciousness, I had to be able to still hold mine. So you start to kind of understand that was it a specific thing I was going to do as far as like doing more streams or doing classes or the other things that I'd done in years before, but it was very important for me to do it. There's also a lot of ancestral karmic clearing I was going through. So it was a big, big year and it's going to probably shift a little bit. You also will see relationships with people start to shift year to year. You know, how much time you spend with someone, the, the quantity of the time. It might be more intense time, and then you might not see them for two or three weeks or two or three months, and then more intense time again. Whereas it might have been people you saw every day for a while. And as they shift and as you shift, as you go through what you got to go through, they're going through what they need to go through, there is a cadence to it, and there's a rhythm to it. And you start to see that. And you start to understand that. You're like, oh, I, I understand why this had to be like this right now. I understand why they had to go away for a while because I had to go do this. And I understand now why we're coming back together. I understand I'm trying to build something over here because in a few years they're going to need to have me have built this over here for them. But they don't really know that. So, you know, it's, it's also this kind of balance on different levels of consciousness having access to so much more information than other levels of consciousness. That you can kind of see, we can kind of see the grander picture of what we're doing. But sometimes we can't even see that until we get to the, the other side of stuff. So... The gateways are open, so if you start to feel certain things coming in, and even if they're not coming in fully, you know, sometimes they just come in, and I always say you haven't even anchored it in until you've kind of lived in the reality for a while. It might take a month to actually really anchor in a reality once you see it coming in. That's why we never talk about things until they're fully nested in there, anchored in. Because as soon as we talk about it, we have, there's an ego to that, and then the whole reality can go up in smoke. It's kind of the old adage, don't count your chickens before they hatch. That's why we say that. That's where that came from. Because the minute you talk about it, you're shifting the vibration to a reality where that frequency, that reality doesn't exist and it goes away. Because technically we weren't ready for it yet because we're still in our ego about it. So, 
he'll start to feel this stuff right now. I'm, I might do a, uh, I'll probably, usually I do my live streams on Instagram on the Lionsgate and the fall equinoxes. So I'll probably do something like, just because people start to think about it a little bit closer. But for the people watching this now, know that the gates opened actually probably a couple weeks ago. They probably opened more or less. They started winding up <laughs> toward the end of August when you had the Lionsgate portal, which opened up early in July. So everything's always opened earlier. Where you are, in your process is you know going to be what it is and how you're going to feel it so i'll get more into that probably in a, a couple more weeks but just to kind of plant that seed so our awakening process what exactly does that mean <laughs> because a lot of the videos i've done a lot of the streams i've done we always talk about everyone's always getting activated even in your human consciousness you're getting activated toward a higher frequency even though we're ticking up in this very incrementally, you know, we're not, we're not blasting onto the scene completely awakened. You know, it's not like in the magic really just pull it, pull them out. You know, now you're out. Now you're awake. Awakenings can take time. They can take years. <laughs> Some people go through what they call spontaneous awakenings. That was not my experience. So it's hard for me to speak to that experience because that was not my experience. I have heard that whether I believe they completed the whole thing all of a sudden i i don't know you know to me it, it's it probably also depends on the density that they had to clear in this dimension in this space for themselves that, that might kind of lend to that a little bit mine was like a longer process so if we've all if we're always being activated what would constitute an awakening above Regularly just getting activated over time, right? If we say we're at really from the minute we're born We're lulled back into the human experience because that's what we are here to do and then or experiment Whether you're in your galactic phases or you're in your soul phases, you're gonna call it something different Then we're going you know, you start to see children grow and they usually go more and more but they get more and more disconnected as they grow a lot of that's because our the parents you know, we kind of would do that to them not realizing that's what we were doing to them but on the other on the other side of it knowing that was our contract was to put them in that experience and then they would eventually awaken out of that right now since the 2012 gateways open where you could achieve multi-dimensionality in the human body which is really what 2012 was before that it wasn't possible to anchor in 12 dimensional realities into the human body you we're starting to see people go through awakening dark night of the soul different times different different part, parts of their life you know we always talk about what our human would deem the midlife crisis because everyone would go through this thing about the same age you know all of a sudden they want to leave their spouse they want to they want to buy this flashy stuff they're they're losing weight they're coloring their hair whatever it was they were something was missing right they, they went through this something is missing phase and I'm trying to figure it out now still trying to validate it from outside still thinking it was something outside that could help with that so there are different phases that even our human ego starts to get less and less control as things go on in our human experience right it starts to get shaken a little bit it is like the matrix starts to look not so real anymore we start to question things so we're always getting activated but there is a marker in your DNA that says okay now it's time for you to go now it's go time you're now going to awaken you know this was your time this is your year um, for me I could usually tell when people's awakenings were as far as when they were gonna start you know like I remember one one person I would talk to all the time and I knew like oh in his 51st year he was gonna start now, how long would it take him to get through his awakening to even get to his ascension? It, it could be years, and that's going to be up to how he is, how any of us kind of take, how we take that journey, how much we fight against that journey, how much we embrace that journey, how much we really look at it and go, yeah, something is off here, what's going on? But the trigger point to that is always kind of the, the funny part, in a sense, you know? For me, the trigger part for my awakening was going through a relationship with a boyfriend I had, you know, years after I was divorced, where... If the human mind looks at that it would say boy I'm surprised the divorce didn't put you into your awakening but it was years after that that I actually and it wasn't even a relationship that was felt as vast as you know being married getting divorced but 
it had a lot of twin flame stuff around it, which at the time I didn't understand. There was a lot of obsession energy around it, you know, and that's what twin flames do. They kind of bring up that obsession energy around everything around the relationship. We start to kind of hone in on a lot of things about us, you know, and what's going on with us and, and why can't this work? And it becomes more about the twin flame energy than it really even becomes about the other person. But when we go through these really tumultuous things that at the time feel so much more gravitas than they should feel. And a lot of us will get that feedback from someone kind of in their human ego still, or really in their human ego, and they will say something like that. And we're like, yeah, I understand what you're saying, but I still feel this immenseness about this thing. You know, like this is the thing. You know, I remember a, a story I read in one of Penny Pierce's books years ago. I can't remember which book it was, which when I was coming through back in the, you know, mid, you know, like 2014, 2015, when I was still kind of at the tail end of my awakening, going into not, I didn't really go into my ascension, I would think, until around late 2015, 2016, where I really started the ascension process. I was still kind of, my awakening was a couple of years because I worked through a lot of different things over those years, but I was still kind of lump my 2013 to 2015 into all that kind of being awakening. But I remember there was a line in her book where she said her mother had like divorced someone. Her, I like her mother got a divorce and she was like 80. And she was like, really? What's the point now? I mean, she was, maybe she was like 89 or something. But old words of why now? You know, now, now you're done. You know, now your soul is like, no, it's over now. And it's like, why even bother? You know, but that's kind of the point because it's greater than that. There's no logic to it. There's no reason why from your human brain, from your human consciousness where you can say, yeah, this is definitely the thing. You know, this is the reason. Now I'm going to go. Now I've got to look at all this stuff. Now I'm questioning everything around me. What the fuck is going on here? Something is definitely off. Why am I so upset about this one relationship that really isn't that big of a deal in the grand scheme of my whole rest of my life, but this is really pushing me to a, a different space, pushing me to wondering why is that? What is going on? Because it was that experience. It was our time. It's almost like so many things mount up over your human over your human life and you get to this certain point where it's almost the straw that broke the camel's back you know you're like okay but this is the thing that all of a sudden now not only is this an emotional thing that's clearing a lot of emotion clearing that next that next bit of emotion you know clearing the next level of emotion whereas could I have cried years before over different things sure but now this is a massive one for me you know, it might encompass a lot of different things, betrayal, blame, shame, grief, all these things are coming up and it starts to unearth once all that stuff starts to clear. And I talk a lot about toward the end of my awakening, I went through another relationship where I remember it was kind of the same thing. The grieving was so hard, yet we weren't together a lot long. It seemed like that. It seems like if someone's looking at it from a human consciousness, this doesn't seem... It seems overreacting to something, but in a way you're grieving everything. You know, at the time you don't know that, at the time I didn't know that. I'm grieving every relationship I ever had in this dimension, across my multidimensional lifetimes, across all my aspects. It's all of that. And there's also a grief for knowing at the time I didn't know that, I would not have another relationship that had that human ego in it. This was the last one. You know, that was my last experience completely even though I would say I was probably semi awake, I was in my awakening. Um, I was still in very much in the fourth dimension, kind of very much in that space. You know, one foot, one foot still in the third, one foot in the fifth, but basically existing kind of in that middle where you are searching. You know, you're on the internet, you're looking for yourself. You might get into Reiki, you might get into just getting energy work done. Psychics become kind of interesting to you. Astrology, numerology, human design. There's so many things during this process that we just get interested in. And maybe stuff we were always interested in, but then it comes back to us again. Crystals, our chakra system, you know, um, pendulums, I don't know if I mentioned tarot cards, I'm trying to what I went through, and all the books on awakening, all the books on spirituality, all the books on what it, how do we create things? What is going on here? What is the meaning of everything? You know, what am I really doing here? Why am I here?
Oh, oh, here we go. Sorry about that. Hopefully that, um, hopefully that'll not be a big deal. Um, I think it just cut off for a second. So, you know, we start looking at all these things and there is that kind of dip where we can then kind of get really entrenched in a lot of the spirituality stuff. And you see a lot of people kind of get stuck here because they kind of trade their human, human, um, kind of enslaved to the human system. And now we're going to be kind of enslaved to the spiritual system for a while, which can, it's just corrupt when it's coming still from the fourth dimension. It's not until we start fully going to the fifth dimension where we start coming out of that awakening process where, okay, sorry guys, having a little bit of a issue with the camera, but okay. I think it's still connected. It's just a little, little funny today. Um, we just start to notice that there's something more going on, you know, and when we're in that, when we get into that spirituality part, when we start getting into that phase where we're just not sure what is going on, you know, now I'm kind of into all this, but we can kind of become enslaved to that too, you know, because we go, that psychic knows more than me. That tarot card where told me this was going to happen. And a lot of that is also gaining our power into what we feel. We do outsource consciousness, even higher consciousness at that part of our life because we're still not sure, you know, we're still not sure what's going on. We're still not sure what is real, what's not real. Do I really believe all this stuff? You know, why is this thing doing it? And that's the biggest thing I remember thinking. And so if you have people come to you and saying, you know, why are you so upset about this one thing? Why is this one thing getting you to go kind of completely, you know, bonkers about all this other stuff? Why is this one thing? Because it was your time. And you can look at all the other things in your human existence you went through to start waking up. You know, maybe maybe harsh relationships, maybe harsh health things. I'm, I'm going to say harsh in the way of how our human would perceive it. You know, how at that point our human ego, our human consciousness is framing it for us, right? You could have health issues. I had a lot of health issues in like the early 2000s that I couldn't really figure out what was going on. Now I can look back and say, like my body was trying to wake up. It was trying to clear. Or trying to wake up. Time I didn't know that, and I kind of went back to, you know. And we'll have a lot of those periods in our life. We'll kind of try, but we we kind of we kind of go back to sleep and we kind of get lulled back in again, because it technically wasn't our time yet. And, you know, it wasn't our time to go. We were still not ready to leave it yet. There are still other things we have. people don't start going through. Their kids are gone because they were focused on, you know, fulfilling that soul contract with those children. So they didn't even go through it later. Other people will go through it with their kids, you know. And what helps that now is a lot of kids coming in are very, they're rainbow children, they're star children. They're, they're kind of on a different frequency already than even children were years ago, you know. So they're coming in just ready to kind of assist humanity in going forward. So we go through so many moments that felt like they should have been the thing. And because they're not the thing, when we get to the one, that that thing that was the thing that really pushes us into our awakening, people call it dark night of the soul, where all your stuff's coming up. You know, like I think I already said it, obsession, blame, shame, guilt, sadness, it's all coming up, you, you know, and you can go through that for long periods of time. My awakening went, went more like, I, I go through a big, huge patch of it, have a little bit of a lull, and then I go through another one, and I went through a series of three different relationships over that, I guess, year, about year and a half. And each one was very similar. They were all twins. It was like one right, you know, right. They all had that twin signature. One right, right, almost right, right behind the other. Maybe a six-month gap in between. It was funny because intuitively, I knew there was another one coming. <laughs> At the time, I was intuitive, not like I am now, but I was intuitive enough to know, you know, it's time it's my time again I think it's the time for this to happen again so you're going to find that you you might have felt it coming you know when you you are more heightened in your awakening but there's still so much deep clearing going on you might be going through a lot of self-worth issues which that's the twin relationships bring up a lot of that but technically, a twin. technically you know my the husband my ex-husband was a twin but because it wasn't my time yet it didn't register like that you, you know it, it, I wasn't awake enough to be registered register that 
and it wasn't time for me to wake up. So it, it played more like a human relationship where it, even the grieving felt more like that. It, it wasn't as intense. It wasn't as, because it was so much, you know, and, and there is a part of our human ego where we when, when were clearing and we don't even realize we're even clearing even then, there's a stop to it. You know, we will only let it go so far. You know, we, we just sort of like, no, nah, I've, I've grieved enough over this. I'm going to move on to something else. And we're still very distracted by the outside world. So, so we can either jump into a different relationship, jump into our work, find something else to do, kind of get lulled back in where we clear to a point, but not enough to push us to that next level. But over time, it just keeps building up to where we clear enough, clear enough, clear enough. And now, now we're at a point where we can start to feel a little bit more is going on. And then the floodgates open. And that's what a lot of people constitute as an awakening. And I've said it before in a general term on here. You know, it's, it's like you get, it's like you're just activated more. <laughs> it, it, it's like you got everything you wanted and boom, there it goes. Or you have everything you thought you wanted and shit still doesn't make you happy. So you kind of get pushed into what is going on. But you just get activated to a point where you can't go back anymore. You can't shut it off anymore. Now you've unearthed a whole different level. And it's always just a different level of it. A whole different level of emotions to clear. And when we get to those deeper, deeper levels, we start getting more and more aware of things. Like I remember talking to a lady a few years ago and she was like, it's so weird. I feel so in tune. Like... I'll think of a movie and turn on the TV and the movie's on. And she's like, so did I create the movie to be on or was it on? And I just knew it was on. So I turned on the television and it was like a very obscure old movie. And it's like, yeah, a little bit of both. <laughs> you, you know, it's in your field and you pick it up, but you're also the one creating in, in a way you're creating your reality and it's in your field. So is it just a few aspect of you putting on the movie and you tune into that? But you're in tune. And it starts to feel overwhelming. That is another reason why I say, everyone's like, why don't I get all my, my superpowers right away? We can't handle it all right, right away. And one, we don't have a purity to be responsible for our powers right away. You, you know, that's what happened. If you look at a lot of the writings on Atlantis, it's a, it's a, it was a corrupt power in a sense. We all had corrupt power, and that's what, like the fall of Atlantis. We don't want to go through that again. So even in our human, in our body, that is in our DNA somewhere that we don't want to have too much power because we can't trust ourselves with it. So that's why in our human ego, in our human consciousness, we look to everybody else to give our power away because we don't want to be responsible for it. Because of all the times before, we played it out. I mean, the human, the collectives are playing out all over again with the corruption of power. It's just because this continual loop we go into. It doesn't matter what the, what the actual collectives look like playing it out. It's the energy of the reality all Again. and it gets played all out again until everything's destroyed and we do when we do it all again so there was sort of this safety switch built in this time <laughs> you know like you can't really be trusted with everything one it's going to be too much for your human brain to take it's going to send you down you know we talked before i did a video on when the veil start to crumble really quickly and you get into what a lot of human aspects the human ego the human Consciousness is going to call it mental illness because everything is kind of blending in on them at one time and they don't know what's real and what's not real. So, and those people were supposed to come through like that. You know, that was their contract to, to have everything collapse at one time. So they could, A, open other people up to, to, to that and go through more of a kind of spontaneous awakening in the sense of look what's going on. But, but it can kind of very it can be very stressful on the human body to do that and that is why it, it does go in stages for pretty much majority of the collectives it, it has to you can't have everyone go through it at the same time because then the whole world would implode <laughs> if everyone's running around saying everything this is just none of this shit makes sense anymore who's keeping everything running you know you still have to have some support system even though it's a corrupt support system it has to be support for somebody where, where, where someone else comes through and then the support starts to shift to higher higher conscious support systems get built but if you have everything going on at one time there'll be nothing to support anybody because it is a while when you're going through your awakening you're still supported by some of the human systems because that was how you'd set it up you know you're still supported by that even though they are still corrupt 
and eventually we do have to move away from those systems. So how long does it take? You, you know, I said mine was a few years and that's just me looking back at it now and saying, yeah, I would probably categorize all of that because one, I wasn't fully, was I, I did I have days I felt fully in the fifth dimension in consciousness? Oh yeah. Were my eyes lightening up, you know, like crazy? What was I starting to notice just little things? Was I really in tune with, you know, I used to do um, energy readings back then for people and I mean, I was still, it was a time first I was hearing everything kind of outside and that's how I would always kind of separate it off at that point is, okay, that's not mine. That's something else coming in. I'm supposed to talk to these people about because my thoughts are here and this is everywhere else. Um, it would always come in on the right side of the, you know, um, and that is the more um, creative, it's not the linear side of the brain, which was always kind of funny. Your dreams start to enhance a lot in these periods but eventually my frequency got to the frequency of where that information was and everything was from inside out and I realized it was just me you know it was just me telling me this stuff and now everything I don't, I don't have any of that where it, it feels like it's coming from somewhere else anymore that that's also what people will talk about channeling that that's how that feels to them but channeling is another thing you'll go through in that usually in your waking process but it also opens you up to higher dimensional consciousness it starts to bring that consciousness in for you and a lot of people are so afraid of that because they're afraid they're going to channel something that's not that's evil which is a lot of the human perspectives on that to keep people from doing it when you can only channel yourself <laughs> there's no one out there for you to channel it's just you it's it's just different aspects of you that's all you can do, whether it's, a, it's a, the alien galactic aspects of you, whether it's different soul aspects of you. They're just really future aspects of you. That's all you can do. You can't tap into anything else. I mean, even when you tap into stuff you want to trans, transmute, it's still just you. But when you do open yourself up to channeling, you are getting in higher dimensional consciousness, which does increase your vibration and it also assists in the collectives because you're also increasing the vibration on the earth in, in a sense by doing that so th there's a reason why we do all these things there's a reason why we put ourselves in different <laughs> places all over there's a different people call it like the new earth gridding system now where there are these awakened people and people going through different phases of their ascension so i get to a certain point with my awakening where i was kind of done with a lot of the spiritual community stuff and I want to kind of do my own go and kind of go beyond that and you, like I said you got a lot of people that get stuck in that I would even say to me the awakening process is that kind of that fourth dimensional process how I kind of feel it is and how I see it and you get stuck there for a long period of time right? you know and, and you're not really totally walking in the fifth dimensional you know your body's not yet your consciousness is high, higher and in those higher dimensions but you're still kind of keeping your body there you get kind of wrapped up in that you know because um, you have to kind of leave all that stuff behind you know you can't you can't continue a lot of that stuff and because it's still a separated state spirituality is still a separate state because it's still talking about spirit guides just talking about all these things archangels which you are all those things but if you don't embody in those things you're still keeping those parts separate from you. So, so you're not going through the ascension of consciousness, the ascension of your body. So that's kind of the break for me when I really started getting into, okay, and now I'm kind of done. And I also, I know I said before, there was so much grieving toward that last, that last kind of really human experience I went through. And I would go through another twin in my ascension process, but I was much more awake for that, even though I I would go in and out of consciousness with that a little bit where I would get a little bit clearing of that obsession energy and clearing that that um, all that twin energy that comes with those types of tumultuous energy that comes with those types of relationships and they're huge activators for us too you know they're, they're just massive they are so massive that you can't underplay them at all but I was Conscious isn't enough to know that's what it was. And when I would dip into unconsciousness, it might be, I might get wound up in a program for maybe two or three days. Maybe it was a week the first time, then it was two or three days. Then I could, then I over, and this would go on for a couple of years with this person kind of in and out version of them in my life. But I started to, where I might just, I might just dip into that energy as far as clearing all that stuff for maybe 20 minutes. And then I would just feel like, okay. <laughs> 
because you start to see it for what it is. And so just because you're in your ascension doesn't mean you're not going to have a lot of stuff you have to, you're still going to have stuff you can't get to by yourself. And you're going to That's what they all always to get us to the next place. It's always to get us to the next step, to push us forward. So when you're in your ascension, when you're in your awakening, when you're going through all of these things, if you feel overwhelmed, you know, you're kind of supposed to. And don't get too bogged down on what it was that got there. Because <laughs> that's going to feel kind of foolish, in a sense. When you look over maybe a lot of other things in your life, you might feel like this one thing. One thing is what it took, but it's also your time. And that's you know, these happy people that they're awakening. And it doesn't. And you're like, I don't know, I thought that was gonna do it for them. And it because it's not their time yet. And you know also when you're in that I would meet a lot of people, especially a few years ago, that were right around that pre-awakening or right into their awakening phase. Or right when they met me, I knew they were about to go into an awakening. You know, because I was in their sphere. You know, I wouldn't even be in your sphere if you're not going to do that. You know, I, I couldn't really exist there. I wouldn't really have a purpose there in a sense. So, I was getting people at that point that were kind of, you know, right on that cusp. They're not, they were kind of... And some people who were even existing kind of in that fourth dimension spiritual realm in a sense. But was kind of getting not sure what that was. Because that is a very confusing time. You know, all of a sudden you might get, like I said, I was a very clear audience. And I still am a very strong clear audience. And when, I'm, and when I am in a, a spot, even though now I, I, it's kind of just all, you know, like you just kind of know. I'm very strong uh, visual now too, but when I'm really in a deep clearing and, and I feel like there's something I can't see or something I, I can't I can't get to, I'll always go back to clear audience. <laughs> I just because that was the first one, you know. So that's the one I kind of always go back to, and we'll kind of sit there and, and 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 listen. And I remember I had a teacher years ago, and she could see everything was very um, visual for her. She could just like see everything in front of her, and some people. That would just in front of you. I see it more if a third eye kind of pop visions for me. But she see everything. And I remember thinking, God, it must be so weird <laughs> to be able to see everything like that. And, and I said, it must be so weird to be you. And I remember she looked at me she's like, it must be so weird to be you to hear everything. And I'm like, that's kind of weird. But you kind of get used to it. And you kind of tune it out after a while. If it's not something that, there is that point when you're in that fourth dimension and you're trying to get all this stuff. And even you talk to people about it, people start, you know, you start to play with time and slowing down time. Time and watching time speed up and how to get very present and slow time down. Or you'll get to, you know, different parts of your process where you'll just kind of know, you know, and, you know, telepathy, mind reading, you know. If you talk to someone that's still in a human consciousness about it, they will say, well, well don't, don't be doing that. You know, you shouldn't be doing any of this stuff. You shouldn't be, or you don't, it's not nice to read people's minds or if people start being a little afraid of you because they are, they'll go the opposite way where they want to ask you every answer, you ask you every question in the world because they, once again, they're in that, I don't want accountability for my own choices yet. So I want to ask you what you think. <laughs> because if it goes south, I'm going back to you to talk to you about it. So th there's a lot of that that goes on. So when you're kind of, you know, in those different phases, people will say, well, you shouldn't do that. You, you kind of, it's kind of a misconstrued power that you're going to go around and read everybody's mind or go around and figure out what everybody's thinking. One, it does get hard to do that when you're in a lot of different people because you're just trying to get you keep your field supported and spinning in a certain direction. So I will find when I'm in a mass amount of people, like if I was in a bar in, in a crowded place, you're just keeping your field spinning. You're trying to get keep the whole field in place. And because you're, if you are the highest vibration there, it's your responsibility to hold that field and hold your field. And everyone's kind of in your field. I don't have the bandwidth then to go around and see what everybody else is doing. <laughs> you know, you will find that you, you dip a little bit in those situations. I still dip in those situations. One-on-one, um, -on -one, three or four people. But if I'm in a mass crowd of people, it, it's too much interference. And it also tuckers you out. You know, can I do some, you know, talk to people about certain things? Sure. Can I get super in-depth on something personally going on with them? No, it's too much going on. And I wouldn't do it there anyway because there is too much interference. 
Whereas if I'm by myself and I'm talking to a person one on one, it's a lot easier for me. Or even and even more easy when I'm by myself to know what's going on with everybody. I don't even need a person in front of me. Normally, if I was going to do a session with someone, I'd know everything we were going to talk about way before I even 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 got on camera with them. It didn't even matter because I already knew, you know. And and that was for, true for me years before even that point. I would already know. I'd already know what they wanted. I already know what I, what they needed to what we were going to talk about. I just knew the whole thing already. Because technically it already takes place and we do start, you do start to live from the future. Whereas in our human existence, we kind of live from the past, you know, and when I say live from the future, you just kind of know how things are going to play out. And then in this moment, you're focused on this moment to make that happen. So you're still entrenched in the moment, but you know why you're doing it. Whereas our, our, in the human conscious, we're so entrenched in the past, we're always trying to do something better than we did before in a sense we're trying to make it better we're trying to you know say something different because of something we said do something different because of something we did we're very focused in the past we're very rooted in the past and that's why we have to do the ancestral karma clearing to clear all that stuff our human ancestral karma our galactic ancestral karma all of our ancestral karma because it does keep pulling us back there even when when i did Used to label something as a past life, or now I would label it as just a multi-dimensional existence. That's so central, and that's why you're feeling that. That's why it also feels so intense. But it's also similar to something that's happening across time and space with you. It's a multi-dimensional link in a sense. It's an energy signature similar, and we have many of those. Or, you know, we don't just have one. It's never just one, and it's never just one reason. But you start to see, feel and see things differently where, where you understand that we have to clear a lot of that stuff. But people get so bogged down, and this is really fourth dimension too because past lives is a big part of that. We get so bogged down in the story of our past life, we don't, we don't even want to look at, okay, but why is that coming up now? <laughs> you know, why does it matter if I was an Egyptian princess, princess right now? Like what is going on in my life that I'm not, that has to do with the story, you know, the energy. Look at the energy behind the story. There's a similar energy playing out now. That's why you're getting remembrance. That's why you felt to go to someone to talk about a past life. That's the reason. It's not about that. It's never about that thing. It's always about the energy that's around it. What's going on right now? Right There we go. I don't know what is going. That's weird today. I think it's because we're having a storm. But I'm gonna actually just gonna I'm gonna end this now before we're probably gonna be a little choppy anyway. I'm gonna see if I have any question. Uh, oh, this is interesting. Okay, so this is talking about. Um, Gateway process is to classify paper and CIA experiments as astral projection. CIA discovered that it worked in 1983. It was classified till 2003. Well, we astral project all the time. Uh, you know, it is always something we are. Once again, apologies. The camera is weird today. This is, but that's what happens when we're live. So it kind of brings a little excitement to it. You're always going to be taking your consciousness forward. You know, we're always going to be doing that. We're always going to be able to do that. And the beginning, your dream state is going to be where you do that the most. So always, and always look at what you're reading. This, this is another gateway into this. Because if it's coming from a human consciousness, it's going to have, see if it feels right to you. You know, everything in the human consciousness, believe it's a lie, and work backwards from that. <laughs> And read it to see what feels right to me. You know, this is a big act. This could be a big activation for me. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at that and see what it says because I'm curious now. So I appreciate you putting that comment in there. Look at it and see how does it feel to me. Do I believe that? And is that really real? Because I went back to everything anyone tells me in a human conscious, anything I ever believed in a human conscious, and go, okay, I'm going to assume that's now a lie. And I'm going to work backwards to see how does this feel to me? Like, does this feel real to me? Does this feel like that's true for me? 
does that feel like there's any truth in that? Um, because we are always going to be able to do it. You can always ask your project. They did a really good, I thought, um, X-Men Days of Future Past. It's kind of a different way for time travel, really. It was one of the time travel ways they did in Days of Future Past, uh, the X-Men movie, where they took the consciousness forward. Um, or actually, they went consciousness went back in that one. Um, so he could do something, you know. But think about every night you're going forward and you're looking at all these things. And, and you, can, you know you're going to be doing this thing. You know you're going to be publishing a book in 20... You might even know, oh, by 2026, i got to get this book published. Well, I don't even know, A, what I'm going to write about. B, I haven't started. But I know in 2026, i got to be, I got to be, have a book published. So what do I do right now to do that? You, you know, and it might be, oh, you have to go to Italy. Or you, you, you'll just kind of know. But you're in the moment of that, but you understand you're working towards something else. You know, we're able to do a lot of really, you know, amazing, amazing things. We just don't believe we can do it. And the belief is really the, the biggest thing. Like, am I going to be able to do all these things? You know, when you hear people, someone say they, they're dreaming about you. You know, and I always love that. If you have a dream about me, oh, pull up a chair because I love to hear, I love to hear about anybody's dream. That is just my jam. But if someone wants to say they had a dream about me, I'm like, what was I doing? You know, what was I doing? You know, what was I saying? What, you know, because I'm so curious because it's it's a different it's a different aspect of that person. You know, my, the aspect I represent to that person. It's also showing me where where I am, what different aspects of me of time and space. I'm in my astral projecting there. You know, there's a lot of different human spins that are going to be on it too. It's always fun to see what you're doing and and you know what what is going on <laughs> with you and from from a different perspective that if you had had that dream if I had that dream of me I might see it a different way but if someone else has a dream and talks about it I might be like oh I I might be seeing it a different way it's almost like people speaking your fears back to you they'll say something and it'll activate you and kind of upset you because it's an activation for you in a sense because they're showing you what you held inside and you didn't know it and dream to be the same it's a different way of, of bringing you information that you might not be open to because someone had dreamed of me doing this timeline a couple years before I did and I remember thinking oh I'm never gonna go do that timeline I'm never gonna go there I'm never gonna Ugh, no I don't want to do that I was very closed off to it but because someone else dreamed it and they were telling me I it felt more sometimes you can get information that way if you you yourself are closed off to it it felt a little more like What's it called? It's, it's a little more hands-off in a sense. And you, so you're kind of like, wait, what, what is going on there? That's weird. I want to hear about that. Now I kind of want to hear about that or, or how, it, how did I feel about it? And they're like, oh, you were fine about it. You were ready to go. And I'm like, I was? Okay. One, they don't have the emotional thing around that experience. And it's a way for you to filter in information when, when you're not open to it yourself. Because even in your ascension process, there'll be certain things you're still going to not want to do. Because it's not sexy, it's not it's not the sexy human reality, it's not how you thought the journey was going to go. The journey's not going to be how you think it's going to go. So, before my camera cuts off again, I'm going to end it today. So, alright, super fun. I'll be back on a more regular schedule, probably around the equinox, when I know what my schedule is going to be. And I'll see everybody next time.